A very warm welcome. Welcome to you to the Hyundai Building Stronger Clubs webinar. My name is Abid Imam, the club engagement lead at Football West. And the, the topic today will be how to fundraise, find sponsors. It's a really important one for our community football clubs, a way to increase revenue, which will have so many more impacts uh, for players and, and participants as well. So the beauty of this webinar series is it's an opportunity thanks to Hyundai for our clubs to, to share ideas, to, to network, and also for um, some industry partners and, and experts to, to share some platforms and ideas that can really help. So we love the engagement. We hope uh, that wherever you're watching from and when you do get a chance to watch, uh, you'll let us know what's, what's of interest to you and can follow up because we'll make sure to circulate the, uh, the slides or any of the presentations that you see today. We've got a really exciting lineup. Uh, first of all, there's from the Australian Sports Commission, uh, Ryan Holloway, who's the National Sales and Partnerships Director. And after that, we'll have uh, Morgan, Morgan Caffrey, who's the Sponsorship Manager at Yanship United. And then we'll, we'll wrap up with the president of Perth Soccer Club, Jason Marocchi. So we've got some great speakers. And the first one who I'll hand the floor over to is uh, is Ryan, all the way from New South Wales or or Sydney. Thanks, David. Appreciate it. Um, and thanks so much for having us. I'll uh, just jump into our presentation here. Um, great to be involved with uh, with Football West. And yeah, we're all about building strong community clubs. So we're hopeful uh, that some of the information you take out of uh, the session today will be helpful. Uh, and get your club fundraising, looking at fundraising as a bit of a diversified revenue um, away from, I guess, the traditional sort of fundraising that we look to do. So um, right now it is June, as we know, the lead up to end of financial year time. So there is still time to uh, start a, a campaign if you've got an account with us. Um, and also, even if you you were new to the Australian Sports Foundation, to be able to get one up and running. So running through a little bit about who we are, the opportunity for fundraising and philanthropy in sport, uh, and how to get involved with us. Um, so who are we at the Australian Sports Foundation? Um, so we are Australia's uh, leading not-for-profit and registered charity, and our purpose is simple, is to raise uh, money for Australian sport, anything that helps develop sport in Australia. Why do we do what we do? Well, um, as Australians, we're, we pride ourselves on being a bit of a sporting nation. We feel um, sport is in our culture. Um, it's really at the heart of every community. Your football clubs would no doubt be the um, the heart of, of the communities in which they operate uh, in Western Australia. Um, we know that Sport has many uh, health and well-being benefits as well, not just the physical side of actually getting out there and participating, uh, but the mental and social uh, connection uh, benefits that sport does bring as well. So we believe that sport's a great teacher. Um, I know how, for myself it's how to be uh, you know, gracious in victory and also accept defeat. Um, so we, we know that sport does a lot more than just uh, get the heart rate up on a, on a Saturday or Sunday. We also believe that it uh, should be an Australian, every Australian's right to enjoy sport, regardless of their ability, economic or socioeconomic status or wherever they are in the country. So that's why we do what we do. Um, we are the umbrella deductible gift recipient for sport in this country as well. So that means when your club registers with us, any donations that come through our platform are then eligible for a tax deduction. So let's have a look at the opportunity and the opportunity that fundraising and philanthropy presents for sport. If we look at the philanthropic market here in Australia, um, close to $11 billion is donated annually uh, in Australia from a mix of corporate Australia, um, private and public ancillary funds, but there's about $4 billion that's given by everyday individual taxpayers. So people that are connected to clubs, involved in clubs, um, people uh, on this webinar today and, and viewing this webinar, you've probably made donations to various different causes. Um, sport doesn't get a great deal of share of that that market. If we take a look at the Australian Sports Foundation and the money that we raised, particularly last financial year, uh, just uh, under $52 million, it represents less than 0.5% of, of the philanthropic market out there. If we compare that uh, to the arts sector, which we in sport think is a really good barometer for us, uh, they get around 3% uh, 
of that market. So 280 to 300 million dollars uh, brought in through giving uh, through the arts sector. And really, that comes down to the fact that the arts has been um, set up in in being able to ask um, more uh, efficiently than sport has when we talk about fundraising and philanthropy. So we think uh, through the Australian Sports Foundation, there's some big upside in this market for sport, and we're hopeful uh, that we can continue to advocate for sport as a giving cause, uh, but also doing sessions like this one tonight with Football West to educate our grassroots community clubs in particular out there that your club is a very good giving cause and uh, you have the opportunity to um, to tap into to some of that market. If we compare that to what sport really does well, um, the, the sponsorship market, uh, if you look at that, that market right across the country at all levels is only around $780 million. So there's a, a really big opportunity for sport uh, in philanthropy. Um, sponsorships also very highly competitive, which I'm sure Morgan will get into uh, later on in this webinar, but uh, it's it's highly competitive out there and it's actually probably way better resource than philanthropy and fundraising within sports. So if we have a look at those two markets, the, the opportunity to capitalise on fundraising and philanthropy uh, for sport right across the country uh, is there. So when do people donate? As I mentioned, uh, we're getting into end of financial year time right now. Uh, through the Australian Sports Foundation Now platform, close to 50% uh, of our donations come through the months of May and June. So last year, 33% of our, our total came through the month of June. It really is giving time. It is really the, the right time to start to ask for donations. And now's the ideal time to, if your club isn't uh, to, to get involved with us and get something up and running to try and take advantage of these last few remaining weeks of the end of financial year. So probably th sitting there and thinking, well, why would people donate to sport? Uh, it's really as simple as like people have been asked. If someone's asked, they'll donate. 85% um, of donations that, are, that have been made is simply because someone asked them to do so. So it sounds very simple. Um, and we do try and make it as simple as possible, and I'll get into how we can help in a minute. But uh, any donation that you've ever given is because someone has asked you to make that donation. So uh, the same principles apply here in sport. Um, they also, donors really like to make sure that their donation is making a difference. And I'm sure that there, there are plenty of opportunities for your clubs to make a difference uh, in your communities and in the lives of, of your donors and your members uh, and participants. So. Um, we've got some great stories that we can tell within sport and uh, we shouldn't be shy about asking people for their donations. So how can we help? How can the Australian Sports Foundation um, help your club? So we'd like to take the opportunity to highlight to you uh, some of the things that we do that you may not necessarily be aware of. So this is a, a quick snapshot here of the ASF fundraising platform. So we operate um, a sports specific fundraising platform, which is online. As I mentioned at the outset, any donations that are made to your club uh, via our platform are tax deductible. We can raise money for anything that will enhance or develop sport in the country. So what does that mean? Um, so you can see on the screen there some examples but it's not just limited to that. It really is anything that will help develop your club and develop your sport. If it's new kit, new equipment to start a season, if it's the need to upskill coaches or volunteers, uh, whatever it may be, they can all be fundraised for us. Do you need to raise money so that your teams, uh, if they're representing at an association level or even at a state level, to be able to travel, uh, that can be done through us. Uh, all the added um, costs that COVID-19 is obviously presented with health and safety protocols and things like that. Anything that your club needs to function uh, can be raised. Uh, you can raise money uh, through us to do so. Um, we've had some great examples, particularly in WA, where uh, natural disasters have hit and fires and different things like that. And clubs have been able to raise money through us and through our platform to help replace equipment that's been lost in those, even down to uh, things that help them with their traditional revenue stream, um, such as uh, fridges um, and, and cookers and different things like that as well. So um, lots of different things that you can raise money for. As you can see there on the page, that's, uh, that's an example of what a project page on our website looks like. Um, each project has their own unique URL and their own unique donation page set up. Uh, we also provide your, your club 
with access to our fundraiser portal on the back end. That allows you to uh, manage all your fundraising activity through the Australian Sports Foundation, run donation reports, find out who's donated, when and, and what to, if you have multiple projects running with us, um, and, and all the information in there to be able to manage uh, your fundraising activity. So why online fundraising? So more people are donating online now than ever before, and that's across the board um, in in all different uh, areas of philanthropy and fundraising. Um, you can see anything from you know the GoFundMe's to the Raisley's and everything like that of the world. Anybody who's participated in a uh, a Movember or a or a marathon, um, anything like that, a lot of those donations are done uh, through the online platform. It it's got so many benefits. Uh, you can fundraise any time. You're not limited to do it within your season or at a particular time of year. It can run year round. It allows you to expand your reach. So you're not just talking to the people that are attending the game days or that you see at uh, your sportsman's lunches or anything like that that you might run. This is actually open to everybody within your community. Um, anybody who's got email databases and things like that, we can really tap into to, uh, a, a broader network of people it's a better experience uh, for the donors. Uh, they're not needing to worry about cash handling or anything like that or um, giving out their credit card details unsecurely. It's all done securely through through the online function. Um, there's also the option for, for donors to um, choose to donate to your club regularly rather than just one off. Um, and we found that people are more likely online to give larger amounts uh, compared to other traditional fundraising methods. So at the Australian Sports Foundation, we're all about helping your club fundraise smarter and not harder. And here's just some anecdotal stuff that we've sort of put together. If we think about fundraising uh, at a grassroots and community club level, it really is all about um, you know the stuff that we're doing. We're, we're raising funds all the time, whether it's through our sponsorship, our canteens, um, you know, if we've got some merchandise sales and things like that. But if we have a look at the effort it takes to do some stuff versus um, what we provide on the online fundraising platform, you can see if we were to do raffles or sausage sizzles, you're talking about another impost on your volunteers' time that are already stretched. Um, you've got a, an outlay. If it's for raffle prizes, you've got to outlay the cost to cover those raffle prizes and then sell the tickets to be able to, to cover it. Um, and it really can be time-consuming and, and not necessarily as profitable. Whereas through the, the online platform, it takes no time to register um, and start an online fundraising page through us. Uh, we've got the, the tools, resources and staff there available to help you with that. We can help you with sharing it through your social media and all that sort of stuff. Um, and in order to make a thousand bucks, all you need to do is find 20 people willing to give you $50. So um, we're all about smarter, not harder. And, and that's what the, uh, the platform is set up to do. So how can you get started? So for those clubs that are listening and, and on the webinar tonight uh, and today, uh, wherever you're watching, um, how do you get started with the Australian Sports Foundation? If you haven't already, uh, visit fundraise.asf.org.au and click Start Fundraising Now. Um, this will take you through to what we're, we're currently in the middle of, which is our end of financial year campaign. We'll help you uh, be able to launch a project uh, straight away. Uh, in order to, to, as I say, take advantage of this time of year. Um, in there, you'll see links to our guidebook to help plan out the activity for this last few weeks, uh, get you asking for donations. The beauty of it is that that project doesn't necessarily have to stop. At the end of financial year, we can continue fundraising for it um, above and beyond 30 June, uh, and that's what we'd encourage to do. We when the donations come through to the Australian Sports Foundation, your donor receives a tax deductible receipt um, for their contribution co-branded with your club's logo. Uh, the funds are then distributed by the ASF uh, to your club bank account twice a month. So really um, accessing the platform, if you haven't already, do that. If you do have an existing account with us, uh, please get in touch if you need assistance uh, putting a new project up um or uh, getting started particularly around end of financial year that's where all the tools and tricks will be on that website um the one thing we would say is to develop a case for support when you're putting that fundraising project together so in its simplest form what are you raising money for uh, be straightforward make sure there's a call to action there let donors know uh, what their donation will achieve we really want to play to the emotion um, of those people that are connected with your club uh, 
you can either, as I say, develop a project that's specific for the end of financial year or one that's going to be ongoing for your club. Uh, and we've got some examples of those coming up. So if we have a look at some of the success stories that we have seen, particularly in the football space, uh, one club that I've worked with personally, actually, uh, at the Australian Sports Foundation is the Dunbar Rovers. Their, their, real, um, their real passion was about getting uh, fee-free football for their junior participants. Um, so basically leaning on other members and other areas of the community to be able to donate so that they could offer um, the majority of, uh, and particularly those that fell on hard times within the club, uh, the ability to play football without the need to to worry about fees. So they utilise their social media, membership connections, um, distributed their links for donations, different EDM templates that we help them um, create as well to get out to their club. They've had some great success, raised over 53 grand from over 30 individual donors. So really working a, a tight network of people within that club so that they can have more juniors uh, play um, the, the great game of football without uh, mum and dad needing to, to stress too much about um, covering covering fees. Another club that we've seen over here in the east uh, is Byron Bay uh, FC. So they had an infrastructure improvements that they needed uh, for their clubhouse and different things like that. Um, basically got a few government grants, but then ran a buy a brick campaign through us um, and started a first 11 coterie group, which allowed them to take donations um, regardless of their size and, and be recognised for it. So um, things like buy a brick, buy a paver campaigns, they can be done through the Australian Sports Foundation and are eligible for a tax deduction as well. So if your club um, is interested in anything like that, again, please get in contact us, contact with us rather. We'd love to hear from you and, and help you out on that journey. Um, so you can see there's a, a couple of different things, uh, a couple of different success stories there. We work with many, many football clubs. Some of you are probably watching this webinar now um, and we encourage you to, to get back in touch with us and see how we can help you reinvigorate uh, your fundraising. So I guess the, the next steps, um, as I say, if you haven't already, uh, sign up to fundraise with the Australian Sports Foundation, download our end of financial year guidebook um, and help us help you uh, make your fundraising as easy and as smooth as possible so that we can help your club uh, thrive and get the funding that you need for whatever the project is that you have on the go. Ryan, that was fantastic. Thanks so much, mate. And uh, I love the analogy and comparison you put there with the sausage sizzle. So I remember uh, doing the bunning sausage sizzle for my club and you're on a wait list for a few months and at the end you make about yeah 1,000 to 1,500 with all the hard work and uh, by being smarter and, and utilising that platform that you have, um, I think this is an exciting opportunity that we recommend clubs to look at and and feel free to reach out to us as well. Um, if, if you think this is interesting to your club, uh, we can help uh, put you in touch with ASF. Um, looking at Millie and your colleague, uh, she provided a list of the clubs in WA that are already using the platform or have been active. And it's pretty surprising. I was um, pleasantly surprised by how many uh, different size and different uh, geographic locations from Armadale to Subiaco and Wickham United or Wickham Juniors in Caratha and Abrolhos in Geraldton. So, yeah, hopefully we can build on that, Ryan. But uh, uh, one more question, mate. What are the minimum requirements for a club to actually use the platform? Yeah, uh, no minimum requirements. A bit, I think uh, the club just needs to be a, uh, a not-for-profit limited by guarantee. Um, having said that, there, is, there isn't anything that stops us working with a professional club. There, we just need to uh, sort of vet that process a little bit more um, and we can do that offline rather than online. But no limitations, any club, any size, wherever you're located. As you said, we've got a good spread of clubs over there in WA and yeah, really encourage any of the clubs that are, uh, are watching this that, that haven't signed up with us to do so. We've got a great relationship with Football West. We have, have done for a number of years and, and we're really excited about working more closely with you on things like this, building stronger clubs um, and making sure that football is alive and well over in the West and, and making sure that uh, we can do the best that we can by providing the tools, resources and know-how to make fundraising easy and low drag for, for your clubs. So uh, as I say, we appreciate the time and, and being able to be part of this series. We're really excited about working with more of the clubs over there in WA.
Onwards and upwards. Thanks very much, Ryan. Uh, we'll leave you to it because I know it's getting late in Sydney. <laughs> thanks a lot. Thanks a bit. And um, Morgan, great to meet you. Um, thanks, everybody, and, and hope to hear from some of the clubs soon. Thank you. So that was the Australian Sports Foundation, Ryan Holloway, the National Sales and Partnerships Director. And it's a good segue because um, we've, we've talked at the top about Morgan Caffrey, who's from uh, Yanship United. And this is a club, well, he's, he's the sponsorship manager there, but this is a club that's 270 members, growing rapidly. And, and I think what's really transformed uh, for them has been the work of Morgan to take them to another level with how they look at sponsorships and partnerships. So uh, the floor is yours, Morgan, and welcome. Thanks a bit. Uh, thanks for having me on this webinar. Um, as you know, I'm, I love giving back to the community, and now this gives me a, uh, an opportunity to hopefully help some other clubs with uh, raising funds and uh, increasing sponsorship. I'll uh, just bring my uh, presentation up for you now. Hopefully you can see that. Just let me know. Awesome. All right. So start with an introduction. Uh, my name is Morgan. I'm the sponsorship manager for Yanchep United. Uh, I've been at the club now for nearly nine years. Um, I'm also the assistant coach to the under 15s. Uh, I have played at an amateur level. I'm getting a bit old now and uh, now I'll just like to enjoy the social aspect. Um, we've got some. Uh, we've done some good results at Yanchep with in terms of sponsorship. You know, with when I took over the sponsorship role, um, we were sitting around probably about five sponsors, and we've managed to increase that to now seventeen sponsors, and a lot of hard work, and especially at uh, uncertain times with the COVID situation. Um, seventeen sponsors obviously means uh, increased uh, sponsorship income and. Um, managed to get uh, a 600% increase in uh, sponsorship sales for the club, which has helped us out massively. Outside of the club, uh, I manage a business in Perth called The Drayman. I uh, hope you don't mind. I just stuck our logo on there for a bit of uh, exposure. Um, I've worked in sales all, all my life. Uh, and an interesting fact, I founded a uh, Blap and Rovers Australasia Supporters Club on Facebook. Um, so... In my presentation, I want to cover five key um, five key elements of sponsorship and how clubs what clubs could, should focus on to increase the sponsorship uh, sales. You know, hopefully uh, after this presentation, you'll you'll have the uh, answers to how do we find a, a sponsor and a partner. You know, what should we provide them value wise, and and what are the easy ways to get funds um, through sponsorship. It's important to have a goal. Uh, this uh, is an abstract taken from my uh, my sponsorship proposal that I send out to the clubs, um, and I thought I'd share it with you uh, with you guys, um, and then take the focus keywords out of there. And that, they're the um, they're the words and uh, what we should be focusing on. You know, we we aim to provide value to our sponsors. We achieve this with one of the largest membership and participant rates in Perth, high exposure and brand awareness both inside and outside our club rooms, our wide-reaching and targeted social media and communication presence and ongoing acknowledgement of our valued sponsors. We believe this will allow you to ultimately generate more business through your brand's promotion to a wider, a wider community-based audience. You know, it, you can see where the focus area should be. Um, you know, we need to provide value. We need to increase our membership at the club. We need to offer brand exposure, brand awareness. You know, we need targeted social media and generate more business through promotion for the businesses that we work with. And all this works with what I like to call the cogs, you know, the, the, the cogs work together. Uh, these are the fundamentals and without the cogs working to full potential, sponsorships and partnerships won't grow. You know, um, you need a, this social media, the uh, webinar from last week, this sort of falls nicely. You know, you need a good social media presence, you know, fresh quality content, good following, relevant information, and build what I like to call real estate. Real estate in terms of where our sponsors can get their brand exposure on the social media platforms. And that goes along with a website. Um, a strong committee helps, you know, um, everyone, on the, everyone um, searching for sponsors, listing goals and targets, if I can't make uh, a meeting with a sponsor, somebody else will go there for me. You know, dropping in to say hello, this is what we're doing, inviting them to events. And most importantly, club support. You know, you need to get your members involved, uh, friends and family. 
get them engaged um, and have an involvement, you know? Uh, so what's an offer for a, a sp in terms of a sponsorship for a club? Um, what what can we uh, what are we selling to to uh, a business? You know why would they want to sponsor a club? You know there's the usual there's uh, kit sponsorship you know signage man of the match uh, sponsorship media channels events and something that might raise your eyebrows a little bit is nothing or something. You know. You might wonder what what you're talking about, Morgan. Well, nothing or something. You, you don't always have to offer something physical. You know, if you if you're good at what you do and you've got your social media, your website, yes, it's something, but it's not actually physical. You know, and being able to um, being you know for a business being able being able to be part of a club is valuable to a business owner. And if you can create that value to them, you don't actually have to have to offer them a lot. You know, and providing you've got all the cogs working together then you can achieve and you can achieve big results. You know, this year alone, um, like I mentioned, we've, we've got 17 sponsors and we've probably spent less than a thousand dollars on, on pitch signage. And we've, we've, we've ordered one or two new kits that we needed due to our growth in the women's team. Again, that's all been taken care of by one of our, uh, one of our sponsors. But apart from that, we've not, we've not gone out and bought new kits. Why should we need to? We, we bought new kits last year, you know, and the sponsors are still there. You know, traditionally football clubs um, sponsorships are focused on branding, whether it be a shirt sponsor, venue naming rights. But what clubs need to do, from my understanding, what I believe is that we we you've got to offer a large variety of ways to assist businesses to achieve their commercial and most importantly financial goals. Exposure examples. So here's a, a few examples that I've just took snippets of. You know, we've got. Uh, uh, events, you know, we, we sponsorship exposure in terms of uh, exposure on the flags, brand awareness, the, the the kits there, the top and bottom of the shirts, water bottle sponsors, man of the match sponsor, uh, and events again. We had a, a, an opener cinema when before the movie started. We uh, advertised businesses in the local area. You know, we managed to sell that real estate, as I like to call it. Um, we've got a dedicated um, space on our website with all our sponsors. So that's almost like a club directory, the go-to of, uh, you know, if you need a trade, if we need you need something, that's the go-to for all our members. And obviously there's a Facebook, Instagram and uh, YouTube. You know, this all helps to convert sponsorship conversions. A little bit of sales strategy. Um, you know, what I find is actually most businesses want to help local community clubs you know um and it's you just got to pitch it right to them um you got to have that mindset that you're not just a club you're not just a sponsor you got to treat it a bit like a business you are providing a service you have a customer and you need to provide that service and and treat it like it's your own customer you know sponsorship is tax deductible you know if a taxpayer provides sponsorship in the belief that you know, they'll get exposure from that sponsorship and it will benefit the business in the form of advertising. It's tax deductible. So you can use that when you uh, are obviously approaching businesses. You've got to plan and identify a target list of sponsors, create a database of local businesses and offer packages available to suit every marketing budget. You know, most importantly, don't give up. Uh, you will get knocked out when you're reaching, knocking on the door, doing cold calling and people will say they're not interested, you know, but I like to um, take no for an answer, but without being pushy, you know. If you're not interested, that's okay, but how about a raffle donation? And what I've, by the end of the, once you've done all your cold calling, you'll have a list of raffle donations. And that's exactly what happened last year. You probably saw on Facebook that the club had a monster raffle. And the monster raffle was a huge success. And basically it was just a, a, a list of our raffle donations that we received. Um, raffled them off and we managed to raise uh, $4,000, which is, the equivalent to one of a, a larger uh, sponsorship package for the club. Essentially, you've got to create valuable content for your customer with the purpose of driving leads and sales to their business. And how do we do this? Here's some of my uh, sales strategies and uh, sales tactics. Use the numbers, you know, our Facebook reach, we're lucky. We have, um, you know, we've got over 1.6 1,600 people liking our Yanchep United page alone. Um, you know, use use the um, tools that Facebook provides. You know, this is a success story. Um, one of my key, um, 
one of our major sponsors for the club. Um, he's a pizza, has a pizza restaurant in Yanchep, and you can probably guess who it is. Um, he opened a new store recently, you know, and um, I did a few posts over the Facebook, you know, promoting his brand, promoting his restaurant, informing uh, our Yanchep community when it was going to open. I dropped him a message with good luck with the new store. Our Domino's post has reached over 2.2k following. So it reached 2,200 people. Um, and I sent him the screenshot of the results, you know. He replied back saying, you legend, thanks so much. We've had a massive night. We're, we're the number one store for most of the night and just sold over 640 pizzas. You know, if you back up your sales, you back up your work with numbers and figures, people won't, won't bat an eyelid to uh, continue to support your club. And most importantly, you can use this information um, to actually sell your sponsorship packages. For example, you know, we have a following of X amount of uh, members. Our average post reaches this much um, and the point number five the presentation or proposal you know this is what you send out to as a proposal and when I first came to Yanchep I must admit our proposal wasn't looking professional uh, it was a bit all over the place you know this like I said have the business mindset this should be treated as your business capability statement this is you're you're competing with a lot of clubs out there and a lot of clubs are asking for sponsorship. You know, presentation is key. You've got to have good visuals. Use photos that include the brand exposure. Um, focus on solving the business's problems, not deliverables. Keep it practical and personal. Most importantly, don't make promises you can't keep. And use a multi-tiered offering. Um, and I'll explain what multi-tiered offering is. Keep it simple as well, guys. The multi-tiered offering, you know, um, we see this every day when we're doing our shopping and, and this is uh, how I uh, go about getting sponsorship for Yanchep United and how I believe is why we're so successful. A lot of clubs out there, I've, I've done my research, I've seen the websites, I've seen their proposals, there's too much information, there's too many options, there's too many prices, you know. The good, better, best approach is what I find is the most successful, and I highly recommend this uh, this tactic, if you will. You know, you see it every day. You know, whether you're buying dinner or a, or a new car or filling up at the petrol station, there's always three prices. And you go to a shopping centre, you know, you go into your calls and you you see a product on the shelf, and and this is the product you want, and they'll always have a cheaper option, a a better option, and a best option. And nine times out of ten, I guarantee you'll go for the better option. Um. With this tactic, with a good, better, best, instead of comparing your services against the competition, sponsors will then compare your packages against each other. That keeps their attention on you and not the competition. This also, um, with this good, better, best pricing strategy, you're offering options saying things like, well, you know what? No worries, if the best is outside of your price range, maybe our good version will surface, or maybe you might be able to benefit from the features that will come with our best version, you know? This helps clubs differentiate their services, close sponsorship deals, and sell on value. It's also good as well having the, the, uh, the three options. The good options to attract new customers. Once you've got them customers, you can offer them the better. Uh, this will keep the current customers happy, and the best is to increase spending by customers who want more. You know, Offer each of these pricing options to customers alongside of each other, allowing them to make an informed decision based on what attributes of each package they value the most. Here's a quote, and then I'll, uh, I'll briefly run over uh, the Yanship United proposal that I sent out. Um, buying isn't logical, it's emotional. If you build your packages in a way that emotionally satisfies your potential sponsors' need to stop researching and make a decision, you'll close more sponsorship deals. You know, you can sell more without being pushy with a good, better, better pricing. That's why I find it uh, more suitable. You don't need to be a great clause. You just need to provide options and ask the clients to basically choose the option. Just double checking, you can see my sponsorship proposal on the screen there. So this is the uh, sponsorship proposal. And this is sh should explain, and uh, I've highlighted a few key areas of the sponsorship proposal. Um, you'll see what I've basically explained and how I put it into this proposal, you know. The images show success. There's a bit of a spill. Uh, 
about Yanchep United. You know, there's facts and figures. We're, we're increasing membership rates by 25% every year. There's 22 game weekends per year with attendees between 200 and an expected 2,000 and carnivals. You're letting the customer know they're, what they're going to get exposed to. Tell them about your success. If you've had any success, tell them about it. Three division titles, two junior top four, four champions. Your business supports the club. The club supports your business. You know, these are social media platforms. We're averaging 40,000 hits per season, which is about 3,000 per month. You know, if you, again, back your sales up with numbers and facts. We invite you to become a valued sponsor of our club and share in our success. You know, why sponsor? You know, list why, why they should sponsor. You know, some of this is pretty, pretty easy, but, you know, just give them the reassurance that why they should sponsor the local club. And then here is my tiered, my tiered uh, packages that I offer. Instead of good, better, best, we start with the, the best is the major. A few different options. I've removed the prices because, you know, that's up to the club and what, how they see the value and how much they want to earn. Um, the gold partner package is the what tier down. The silver package is the tier down from that. And the baseline package is the bronze partner package. Now, the bronze partner package actually doesn't offer them much, but it's that something that, not nothing, it's something. You know, we offer the website and social media. We've built that value. They're getting um, advertised in our newsletter that we send out. Promotional material and events, you know, and we invite them. You will see on all my packages, we invite them to all of the Unchip United events. And you might wonder, well, that's crazy because these are ticketable events that we sell. Well, they've they've contributed to our club to to give us a sponsorship. And hey, guess what? You know, you can invite them to the sponsorship, invite the business, the team, invite the invite their employees to come as well. You know, like we have beer tasting events. We invite the sponsors. They can get a, a vibe for the club. And guess what? They're going to spend money whilst they're at these events, thus raising money for the club as well. And then if they want to take this, the sponsorship further, there's little bolt-ons that they can add, you know, additional avenues of opportunity. And this is basically um, what I started the presentation with and why I believe we are successful and how we can be successful for a business. And that's how, uh, how, I've been, how I've been doing it. So hopefully that helps a lot of clubs out and hopefully uh, clubs can learn from it. Morgan, this is outstanding. Really, really great to see how you've actually done it. And I love the the multi-tiered approach. Uh, you you know, I, I remember we met last year when you were in your first season in the in the role, I understand. So I'm I'm very interested in knowing what the calendar looks like for you um, because we know what it's like for a player with, with the seasons, but what's a sponsorship manager? How do you break up the year and, and look at, okay, this might be my time to do the uh, the cold calling or is it something where you're always open to new sponsors or is it a certain time of the year how does that all look yeah look i do a lot of my hard work before the season starts um and i i've just pretty much finished ordering pitch side signage you know we've, we've got the kits now that we needed and the time should be spent looking after your customers you know you should be touching base with them and reaching out to say hey is there anything we can do for you have you got any promotions we can promote on our social media on our website would you like to come to our event you know we've got a beer tasting event coming up we've got a, a mental health week uh, on the horizon uh, would you like to get involved with it you know and then because i find that if you were just doing sales 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 you'll lose the customers that you have so it's always good to just check in with them and, and maintain the relationships. And that's the area that I'm focused on now, to be honest. I, I understand uh, it's the end of financial year, um, but, you know, I'm open to, to new sponsors any time of the year, but, you know, I like to look after. I've done the hard work at the beginning of the season. And I want to look after the sponsors for that season. Yeah, it sounds like a good strategy because now you've you've done the hard work with the 17 that you have on board and the best thing is just to keep them there and retain them, isn't it? Retain those partners. Yeah, uh, the next one is you mentioned social media so i'm guessing there must be a very close relationship between your role and, and whoever uh, the team is running social media for yanship united how, how does that look yeah so i have access to social media as well so i help out with the posts regarding sponsorship um, it's a big position a big role and it's a it's a key role for the club is the social media position 
um, we work well together. We we help each other out and give each other ideas. Um, but it can be too much sometimes for for him to keep up with the sponsorship. And um, you'll see uh, the activity on the uh, Yanchep United uh, Facebook page is is very active and. Hence why we're getting such good results and, and a large target audience reach. You know, one final one, uh, Morgan. You mentioned with the 17, I'm very interested on your sponsors, how many might have already come from connections you have within the club, being members, businesses, or um, or were they quite a few that were through your cold calling efforts? I'd say 90% were the cold calling efforts. <laughs> um yeah, there's, I actually uh, have a someone who works with me on the sponsorship front as well, Neil. I'll give him a mention. He helps me out. Um, again, look, I, I run a business in Perth and you know, you know what it's like having a full-time job and doing this. It's almost like having another job. And if you have that support and assistance, um, if I, like I said, I can't do the drop-ins every, as much as I'd like to, but Neil, uh, he's a FIFO worker. So when he comes back, he, he'll uh, catch up with me and say, hey, Morgan, what do you need me to do? over the two weeks that I'm back and he'll actually go out and, and build them bridges and relationships with the businesses. Well, Morgan, uh, well done to yourself, Neil, and, and everyone at Yanship United. Uh, just by looking at the proposal, I feel like sponsoring the clubs. <laughs> so, yeah, <laughs> Thank no, you very much. Done a great job. And it's testament with the, with the membership growing as well. And it's a lovely club. So uh, thank you for sharing. And uh, mate, yeah, we'll, we'll, our next um, presenter is... Uh, someone who's also very across things at, at one of our biggest and most successful clubs, uh, Perth Soccer Club. We've got uh, Jason Morocchi, who's the president. He'll be taking us through how uh, they've transformed their their overview of partnerships and, and dealing with that at an NPL level too. Thanks so much, Morgan, and welcome to Jason. Yeah, um, thanks, Abid. Um, well, I'm Morgan, and um, great to see uh, Yanship uh, United um, uh, going strong, um, particularly on the uh, on the sponsorship uh, uh, front. It's a, um, a tribute to the hard work of, of yourself and, and everyone there. Uh, I think it's fantastic to um, to see um, uh, clubs thriving um, across uh, across Western Australia. Um, I will um, let me just share uh, the uh, uh, presentation. Now, my presentation skills, unfortunately, are uh, a little bit. Um, I've, I've done this one on the on the fly, so hopefully, you find the content uh, uh, a lot better than my uh, my presentation skills. Um, just hoping that uh, will uh, will come up. Uh, oh, there we go. Excellent. So, just for a bit of background, um, my name's Jason Morocchi. I'm the um, president of Perth. Uh, soccer club. Um, I um, was elected uh, to the role at our AGM in, in November, so so relatively uh, new to the role, but um, have a very strong family connection uh, to our club. <clears throat> our club was founded in, in 1948. My grandfather played for the very first team. Um, my my dad, my uncles have all, all, all played at the club, my cousins, um, my, my kids are now involved. Um, at the club as well. So four generations of our family um, at the club, um, which is very special to us. And, and we have numerous families in a, in a similar uh, situation. Um, so um, I've titled this, um, this um, presentation, Better Players, Better People, um, because that is what we're about at, um, at Perth Soccer Club. And um, as um, Morgan said, there are, there are, you know, when it comes to sponsorship, you can um, sell a number of things at Perth Soccer Club, um, particularly under um, under the, the the new regime, and, and we've got you know a number of uh, uh, new board members. We're selling our value, um, and and we're very strong on that. Um, so you come to Perth Soccer Club, um, we will make you a better player, but more importantly, we'll make you a better person, and we really strongly. Uh, uh, believe in that. So I do just want to take a little bit of time to um, um, run through, I guess, our, our mission statement. We have a purpose at, at, at Perth SC and it's all about um, um, better players and better people. Um, you come to us, we want you to strive to play at the highest level possible. That might be NPL, it, it might be playing in our, our amateur program, um, our women's program. Um, it might be playing for 
you know, for Palmer, um, like um, our former junior uh, Alessandro uh, Ciccardi is is doing. Um, our vision, we want to be the best club in, in Western Australia, both on and off the pitch, and the off the pitch is very important um, to myself. Um, and we want to represent our state uh, with distinction on the on the national stage, not only on the pitch, but off it as well. And our mission, this is what we're all about. We want to create lifelong members and supporters of our club who pass on their love uh, and passion for our club to the next generation, like my family and, and, and many others. Um, the boys and, and girls that are playing at our club now, we want them to, um, um, you know, uh, enjoy their playing time. When they have their children, they bring them back to Perth SC. Um, they get involved in coaching committee and, and the like, and it's a, a lifelong connection uh, to our club. Um, uh, we, we're very strong in our values, and I won't run through all of these, but you can see them on the on the screen. Uh, integrity. Uh, respect, um, ambition, uh, effort, uh, teamwork, and, um, and and community. So um, we're a very strong um, values-based club. We always have been, but um, we are putting this now to the um, to the forefront. And when it comes to sponsorship, um, we are looking for for sponsors who buy into our values and have alignment. Um, with the values of our um, of our club. So as I said, um, we um, I, I come into the, um, the the president's role in um, in November, and um, I just I, I decided to um, put my hand up to um, to take on the uh, the sponsorship uh, portfolio, and um, there was a challenge there. Um, you know, everyone comes to to Dorian Gardens and and sees the big structure we've got there and the facilities and the marble staircase and think, well, these guys are loaded, right? Um, they got money. It, it's just growing off trees. Well, it, that is just not the case. Um, we had declining sponsorship, um, and that was due to for an, due to a number of reasons. And 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 that's you know, COVID was a was a significant contributor um, to that, um, but. Sponsorship was on the on the decline, um, not only in in numbers but um, uh, revenue as well. Um, success doesn't equal sponsorship dollars. Um, we won the um, the MPL four out of the last six seasons, right? Um, highly successful club. We've won twenty six uh, titles all up, but you know on field success does not translate to um, sponsorship dollars. Um, we were selling the wrong wrong product. Um, we were selling signage. We were selling, um, uh, you know, um, branding on the um, on the front of our shirt. We were selling sleeves. We were selling all these things, which um, I don't think um, have significant value um, to our sponsors. I mean, let's let's face it. We're playing um, we're playing MPL WA. Um, whilst we're all very proud of that for a sponsor um you know if you really want to spend some dollars and, and get your brand out there um you're probably going to look at uh something um, more on the national uh stage or or a, a product where um you're going to get more more eyeball or eyeballs um we didn't have a plan um we had no hunters so we had no one out there hunting um, for those new opportunities. And and probably more importantly, we didn't have farmers. We actually didn't have people who looked after um, the sponsors um, that were at the club. So there was a challenge there. Um, and um, you know, we we needed to um, we needed to address it. Um, so we come up, you know, this is a, a bit of a new new game plan. And um, you know, it's it's not something that I sort of mapped out and 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 drew up on a on a, on a on a whiteboard like a coach would do um before um before a game on on Saturday but um we needed to know um we need to come up with a new plan um so the new new game plan and these are some sponsorship tips that you know I'm I'm happy to share with um um those that are that, that are um watching um and and you need to know what you're selling Right. And as I said earlier, we are selling now the club's values. 
um, better players, better people, um, integrity, respect, um, community, teamwork. If we want to partner um, with sponsors uh, who buy into our values and are aligned with our values. And the value for them is that they can be aligned with a community club um, which shares the values of, of that organisation. We go hand in hand um, you know, to, the to the broader community and say we are partners because we have shared values. And um, that's something that I'm, I'm strongly, um, um, you know, strongly uh, uh, supportive of. Um, so we went away from that, oh, you know, company X, come and sponsor us and we'll give you a sign at the, you know, at the back of the goals. And, you know, we've got 200 people watching on, on live stream, so you'll promote your business and da, da, da. like, I mean, you know, I, I'm a business owner myself. I sponsor the club. I get absolutely zero value out of the sign that I get um, at Dorian Gardens, right? Zero value. Um, I don't, I don't have a telephone number on there or anything. I've got my, my sign out there. Um, but what's important for me and my business is that we're aligned with a community organisation that shares the values of our business and we can go to our, um, our clients and stakeholders and say we support strong uh, community clubs that are uh, producing better players and better people and are, are good corporate citizens. And that's what we want to, um, that's what we want to get behind. Um, we did some smart scouting. So, you know, in football, um, you need to uh, you need to know the positions and um, you know where you're weak and, and where you're strong and, and who you need to you need a centre forward or a right winger or, or whatever. So um, we um, we scouted, um, we identified um, you know the various um, uh, industries and, and, and businesses and professions, and we went and you know we partnered with a with an insurance broker. Uh, we partnered with a um, um, you know, the, the Italian club, right? So we've got this a fantastic facility right across the road from us. Um, our club was actually born out of the Italian club. And um, we went over there. Um, my members were saying, how can you do a deal with the Italian club? We've had a rift there for, for such a long time. It's They're so difficult to work with. I went and uh, caught up with Sel Vallelonga, the, uh, the president of the, the Italian club. I said, Sel, we should do it should um, have an agreement where our members are um, uh, your members and uh, or, or we share the, the, the benefits of, of each other's membership. Not a problem. Um, Sal came on, he's, he's provided us with some fantastic um, contra sponsorship so our boys can and girls can go over um, and enjoy pizzas and all the other fantastic stuff that they, uh, they uh, do over there. And um, bang, we got ourselves a, a fantastic um, our sponsor, and we've got a, a partner that is aligned with our values, and um, our members now um, enjoy the benefits of the club next door, and and that should have been happening, you know, years and years ago. And I've got all these old members, you know, um, who are fantastic and great supporters of our club, who who, who are absolutely delighted that the two clubs have come together and um, are working um, um, with each other. So that that's you know been a, a great uh, great story. Um, it's about what you can give, um, not what you uh, can receive. You know, what, what can you give your sponsor? And I think um, Morgan touched on on, on this as well. Um, uh, you know, we uh, we have a new match day sponsor in in Auto Strata, um, fantastic um, uh, car dealership uh, um, in in Burswood, and uh, Paul Lombardi's fantastic supporter uh, uh, for us. And now. Um, we had a, a package for, for Paul, and Paul said, look, I really don't need this, 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 and this, but I just want I just want signage. I want brand awareness. I want to be able to bring my car down to the uh, club every now and then. I don't need, um, you know, your pre-game pre -game luncheons because I'm too busy working, and I don't need this. I don't need that. Um, and, um, you know, and, and we also... Um, you know, with Paul, um, put him on on every single sort of um, uh, every single social media media tile we do now, promoting our match days and our and our um, you know, full time scores and the like. 
and we also um, introduced the um, um, Autostrada um, uh, GWN Haval uh, crossbar challenge at half time, where um, we pick someone out of the uh, pick someone out of the um, the uh, crowd, and uh, they get free three cracks at hitting the crossbar from just outside the uh, the penalty box, and if they get the uh, hit the crossbar, they win a hundred bucks. If um, they miss, we jackpot it um, the following week. So I think we're up to four hundred bucks um, um, this week. So um, um, you know, a, a great initiative. And we didn't ask him to put extra dollars in for that. We just took some of that money that he's given us, and we are giving it away. Um, and um, you know, a tip to all: if anyone wants to do the crossbar challenge, don't pick the little kids because they ping the crossbar, and um, you know. They just want to spend it on lollies or, or whatever. Um, so in terms of um, sponsorship as well, we have a structure. So Morgan mentioned um, at, at, at the Anship, um, the, um, the sponsorship uh, tiers, we are very similar uh, from memory. I think it's um, diamond, gold, uh, silver, bronze. And, um, you know, um, that um, depending on, on the category, that, that gets you, you know, certain... Uh, um, benefits, but we also tailor, and 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 you know Paul's um, at, at at Autostrada is a um, is a prime example. He didn't want some of the stuff we were offering, so we tailored a, a package uh, to suit his needs. And um, you know he's um, uh, been very grateful um, of that. Um, everyone wants cash, right? Cash is king particularly, you know, I come from an Italian background, so we, we love cash, right? But um, you shouldn't discount Contra. And um, um, we have some fantastic uh, Contra sponsors. I mentioned the WA Italian Club, um, uh, the guys at New Look uh, Dry Cleaners. Um, uh, these boys, um, they, they do our three senior uh, men's kits every week. Um, and it is an absolute godsend for our, our team managers and our volunteers that rather than having to, um, you know, run you know, three smelly kits each um, each weekend um, through their own uh, laundry or, or the um, the crappy little machine we got at the club, we can give them to um, uh, Larry and John. We, we drop them off on a Monday or, uh, knowing that, um, you know, by, by Thursday we can pick them up, pressed, um, packaged up, all numbered, the lot, and um, you know, I've, I've, our our um, white away kit has never uh, looked better, um, and it's about it's probably about three or four years old. Uh, but those boys are doing a, a superb uh, job, and even Eldo Eldo Trinker at um, Pretone um, uh, Graphics, um, we um, probably only one of the only clubs. There might still be a few, so forgive me if I'm wrong with this. That that produce a match day program. And um, you know Aldo and and the guys at Pretone do a do a fantastic job with their with their contra sponsorship. So you know, don't discount um, uh, contra. Um, the work only starts when you collect. So everyone thinks, oh, I'm going to go grab a new sponsor. Sponsor pays the money, and job's done. No, nah, the job has only just started. You need to, um, as Morgan said, you've got to show value to to the sponsor. You've got to show them some love. You've got to um, uh, roll out the red carpet. You've got to keep uh, talking to them. You've got to listen to what they're wanting um, and uh, make sure that you're you're delivering. Um, Tony Finney um, is a uh, uh, our club patron and a, a life member of our club, very highly successful businessman and a, a fantastic supporter of our, our club. He always talks about the team. You have to have a good team. doesn't matter... Um, um, you know, how good uh, you might think you are. Um, it's a team game, just like football, and uh, we've got to work together. So you work in a team. Um, you have, obviously, greater networks because more people know more people, and um, the networks and opportunities build. So, um, you know, we've got a fantastic team at, um, at Perth SC, and, um, you know, we are... Um, uh, working hard together to um, uh, build the networks, build the opportunities, and and build the uh, the sponsorship uh, uh, base. Um, and 
as in football, you've got to put in a shift, right? Like the harder you work, um, it's 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 reward for effort. Um, now, you you can't just go and fire out four thousand emails. Um, you can't, um, um, uh, you know, um, put in one call. Um, I like to I like to think uh, as a um, I like to think of it in footballing terms, right? So you put your away kit on. So I put on my white away kit and you hit the road and you go and see people right and you and and you talk about what it means to be part of our um our great club and the, the values and the opportunity and um and what it um you know what it means um so um that's you, you you've got to work it you really really do um one thing I'll, I'll go back to smart scouting because I do want to um, give this example as well. Um, we've, we're in a partnership with um, uh, Australian Blind Football at um, at Perth SC. Uh, the guys are using our venue um, on weekends, um, which is fantastic. Uh, it's great to see um, uh, uh, the the participants there, um, you know, enjoying uh, the great game of football. Um, smart scouting. We wanted to be able to provide those um, those participants uh, with with club memberships, some kit, um, some equipment, and, and others. And um, we know that um, APM, which is a very big um, organisation and, and has a lot of a uh, lot to do in the um, um, NDIS space, um, we thought we should have a a conversation with them to see whether they'd like to um, support uh, blind football and, and and power chair, which we um, have a um, have a relationship with, and um, you know they came on board. They didn't even blink um, when we um, we put the proposition to them because you know their values aligned with ours. They love the uh, the program, and um, you know we've got a fantastic new uh, new sponsor at our club for that all abilities um, uh, section, which we're um, which we're growing. Um, so finally, um, I guess I'll give a bit of a half-time report because this is a um, uh, you know a long game and we've got a lot of work to do still at Perth. Um, I'm not um, I'm not convinced um, that um, uh, we've reached the final whistle, uh, not even close. Uh, but our, our number of sponsors and, and dollars have increased, so um, um, we'll, we've got over 50 sponsors um, uh, this year at Perth. Um, several of them new sponsors which is um which is fantastic um it's funny you know when we um when we were trying to flog signage and branding and whatever it was we couldn't fill um the the, the signage um capacity at Dorian gardens when we start selling our values and what we're about we've exhausted our perimeter signage um we've got new sponsorship categories and I talked about um you know the match day sponsor in in auto strata and um our all ability sponsor in in APM um and um we we we're continuing to look at um uh, new categories and opportunities we've got some fantastic new leads for for next season which um which puts us in good stead but like I said we we've, we've got lots more to do um we're only we're only at the start of the journey um, but um, you know it's it's been very uh, very rewarding, um, but um, a lot of hard work still to do. Thank you, Jason. There was a lot of notes taken from yours and and Morgan's and Australian Sports Foundation's uh, presentations. I loved the analogies, uh, the football analogies that you weaved in and. It's uh, interesting to know that this all links into keeping the team looking very spick and span on the field as well with their dry cleaned uniforms. <laughs> yeah, uh, abso sure. absolutely. Boys, uh, the boys do a fantastic job. Much better than me having to wash them because, um, uh, yeah, probably not, uh, probably not um, the ideal outcome. Um, they'd be you very slim. That. They'd be very slim fit if I was um, <laughs> if I was washing. You know, you talked about teams in the presentation and it's something also Morgan pointed to uh, with having the assistance there. So what does that look like at committee level with the people who are involved with the acquisition and now looking at that retention and, and maintaining partnering, uh, maintaining the servicing of the partners now? Yeah, look, it's um, 
you know, everyone's got a role. Uh, everyone's got a role to play. Um, you know, president's got a, a big role um, because uh, um, you know you, you're the um, sort of the, the face of the uh, of the uh, of the club. But um, look, it's it's all about how we treat our sponsors. You know, when they come through the gate, um, making sure that um, you know that they've got a place to park. Um, that when we get them upstairs at, a, at one of our pre-game functions, the um, uh, the meal is good if, if they choose to, to have a meal before the game. Um, that we've got people around, right? Because football's about people. Um, you, you don't want to rock up to a game and, 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 and you're the only person there sort of twiddling your thumbs and um, chatting to, you know, the person that you come with. You want to come and you want to meet new people. You want to meet um, um, ex-players, you want to meet, um, you know, politicians, um, and that's something we try to try to do as well. Um, make sure our local, um, our local uh, state and federal representatives are, are at our games at a at a regular basis. Um, you know, want to make sure we got reps from Football West uh, um, at our games on a on a regular on a regular basis. Um, you know, we want to. Um, it's it's about community. Our game's about um, community, and if we can get our sponsors up um, and um, enjoying the the social aspect of of our game, then um, you know they'll they'll come back, uh, no doubt. With the values led philosophy of the club, and uh, you know Morgan showed us the proposal that they've put together. Did that resonate with you, or is there anything that uh, Perth Soccer Club has done differently with? How you present your case to potential partners? Oh, look, um, our values, I think, um, have always been there. We, we've always believed in in these values. I, I just don't think we've articulated them. Um, and um, now we lead with the um, with those values. Um, but you know, we've got to live them too, right? You can't just put them on a piece of paper and um, and and say, oh. I'm Better players, better people, and um, we have integrity and respect, and that. Yeah, you, you actually have to. Um, um, you have to deliver on that, and um, that's how we'll be judged. Um, some people might say, "Well, you're leading a little bit with your chin because um, you know you something will uh, um, something will happen or or, or whatever." But um, you know, we'll we'll be judged uh, by that. But the the, the values based um, approach drives everything at our club every decision that we make as a board um and i'm hoping you know from a from a coaching perspective from a um junior perspective it 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 it, it should be done through the lens of our values and um if if we can do that um we will get most of our um our decisions right um we're not going to get everything right because no one ever does but if we can hand on heart say, well, we made that decision based on what our values are, what we believe in, um, then I think, you know, we will have success. Well, wishing, wishing Perth Soccer Club and yourself great success with that. Uh, thank you, Jason, for sharing your experiences. And, and this is really for the football community. So, and to yourself, uh, Morgan, as well, hugely um, appreciated to those uh, to to you tuning in to actually uh, take in some of this uh, we appreciate you uh, doing the hard work at, at clubs and we hope that this has provided some food for thought and we always welcome anyone to reach out to us um, because you know that's that's where we've got the the benefit of, of clubs helping clubs which is what this whole uh, Hyundai building stronger club series is about so from um, from myself at football West team and and from Jason and, and Morgan, we say good night and uh, keep smiling, keep scoring. Thank you. Thanks for the opportunity, Bid.